Hi there, my name is Jim Knight. I'm giving a keynote at this year's Teaching Learning Coaching Conference, and the title is Seven Secrets of Great Instructional Coaching. It's based on 25 years of research on instructional coaching. In that presentation, one big idea I'm gonna talk about is the distinction between push and pull coaching. It's an idea that a lot of people have talked about. Push coaching and pull coaching, one way to think about it is if your car ran out of gas at the bottom of a hill, and you had to push it up the hill, just how hard that would be. You'd have to put a ton of effort into it, and you probably would give up because the, the hill is steep, not the heap is still, <laughs> the hill is steep, and, uh, and the car is heavy. On the other hand, what if the car ran out of gas on the top of a hill, and you could see a gas station down at the bottom, and all you had to do was coast down the hill and step on the brake periodically, do a little steering and adjusting, and coast into the gas station. Well, that distinction in coaching push versus pull will tell you whether or not you're going to be successful. If what you're trying to do is get the teacher to do something you think they should do and you're push, push, pushing them to do something, there's a really good chance you'll encounter resistance. And just like pushing a car up a hill, a really good chance you'll get to a point where you say, this is too much work and it's not happening. On the other hand, if the teacher sets an emotionally compelling goal, a goal that really matters to them, that will make a big difference for kids' lives, then the whole coaching process is pulled forward by that uh, teacher's goal. The goal pulls the process forward. So the question is, are you doing push? Or are you doing pull? Uh, how to set that up, how to ensure that you have the right kind of goals, that's a big part of my presentation. And you can learn more about the Teaching Learning Coaching Conference at instructionalcoaching.com.